why would the I, I understand you want like the most popular sport in America, but wouldn't you want to rig the NBA who's super involved, like super big in China? Wouldn't you want to try and rig it for some sort of American political stuff? Like you would want to go over there, right? They're massive over in China or major league baseball. Who's big in South America and over in, you know, certain European countries like football, the one that, that nobody else watches, but us crazy. to me. It's just, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything else. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. I, I just think people don't want certain teams to win. And when they win, it equals, it equals rigged. And yeah. um, I was the only one on my show that predicted that uh, the Chiefs would end up winning the Super Bowl. Everybody else was all 49ers, and if the 49ers don't win, the NFL's rigged. So, great minds think yeah. alike, brother. <laughs> I, I I was like sitting here the sun. It was the Saturday before the Super Bowl, but it was the Monday episode that dropped after the Super Bowl. And I was telling Leighton, our guy, I was like, "Listen, I'm telling you right now, the Chiefs will win." And I don't want them to, but I'm putting all my bets on them. I I put about 10 bets in. Nine of them were on the Chiefs. The other one was on Debo Samuel to win Super Bowl MVP, just in case the 49ers won. But I was like, I am so sure because yeah. this is the Tom Brady effect again. This is what we're doing. This is what we did with Brady. I don't think they were like this, just the worst playoff team that ever got there. I, mean, I think they were absolutely a not. Team. They had a good no. defense, a good run game. Also, though, I just, I'm glad Detroit figured it out in the second half. They were not running it at all. And Goff yeah. was under 100 yards in the first half. And I was just screaming, even though I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've become a Lions fan this year, certainly. Uh, but I was like, run the damn ball. And when they started doing that, they had great results. Mm-hmm. And they wore down that Tampa defense. Yeah. And as the injuries were piling up, they really just, that, that just crushed the Buck spirit. Well, what's really going to worry about me in, on Sunday is Dan Campbell. Right, and right. Yeah, he, so I mean, have like an emotional decision that's just going to backfire. Well, they were up seven at one point, and they're driving down the field. This was like probably this is going to win the game, but they could have just ran the clock down. They were running the ball all over Tampa. They were destroying them on the ground, mm-hmm. and he kept throwing. He kept throwing, and and the Lions fan I was sitting next to was justifying it by saying he's trying to put the game away. He's trying to put the game away. I was like, you can put the game away by running the ball here. And then in 2010, they beat Indy and New England. They beat Man- Sanchez's Jets beat Manning's Colts and Brady's Patriots back. But lost back. to, lost to Ben's Well, that's, but that's the big three. That mm-hmm. was the big three for 16 years where it was literally all, all always those quarterbacks except the yeah. one time Flacco made it. So um I hope Flacco comes back. I do. I, I whether it's with the Browns or I actually I prefer it not to be with the Browns just because I'd like to root for him not in the division. But I hope he I hope he can still be out there slinging it next year. Yeah. Um, actually, I wanted to go back to the 49ers for a second. Okay. There's a big free agent quarterback, and I was just kind of um, brainstorming this. There's a free agent quarterback this year, Baker Mayfield, Yeah. to the 49ers. I think that's... What, they're going to dump Brock Purdy? They I'm might. Throw like six interceptions. Uh, ima- imagine, if, uh, imagine if he plays like shit, he shits the bed on Sunday. Possible. They say so, yeah. but the Ravens and we'll, when we get into, we'll talk about this. The Ravens already, or the Ravens have a chance, and they're already the first team this century, first AFC team this century to win a super, to win multiple Super Bowls with multiple quarterbacks. You know, the Patriots always had Brady, the Steelers always had Roethlisberger, yeah. the Colts and Broncos had Manning. They shared, you know, Manning, um, and the Chiefs have had Mahomes. But the Ravens, they won it with Dilfer in 2000. They won it with Flacco in 2012. Lamar Jackson is far and away the best quarterback. Oh, my had. God. Yeah. So they have a chance to win it with – not that Flacco wasn't. I love Flacco, and I think he was a – I heard a, actually, I heard a great Flacco. interview with him on Pardon My Take this – or on Friday. He did a fantastic interview. He was hilarious. He was, like, personable. Oh guy, yeah. He seems like he was just, like, another one of the guys. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about – he said he still thinks he can throw it like 75 yards yeah. in the air, which is insane that he can do that. And I would believe him, too. And then he was talking about his time with the Jets where his kids were giving him shit because they were like, Dad, you suck. Like, in the Niners were on the other side of that in the Chiefs Super Bowl. They had a 10-point lead late, uh, gave up the touchdown, couldn't put the game away, gave up another touchdown, couldn't get the go-ahead touchdown, and then the Chiefs ran and got a score and, yeah. and really put the game away. So, I, I don't know. That's That's what I feel like with – you know, that's the difference, I think, between the Chiefs and the Niners, for example, 
It's just that you know if Mahomes, if you need a drive, you are shaking in your boots as a defense or yeah. as an opposing fan or whatever. But with the Niners, you're not. You feel like, yeah, Purdy might lead him down. They got a good offense. But we could also stop him here. Yeah. Like we've seen him You can struggle. force a mistake. You put yeah. the pressure down. Yeah. You pin your ears back. Hopefully, he'll make a mistake. Hopefully, he'll panic. Well, and that's always the thing. They say, you know, it's hard for an offense to go all the way down the field, not make a mistake. Mm-hmm. As the Bucks found out, let's say, yesterday. Yeah. Um, Detroit, yeah. first conference championship since 91. Second ever. Second ever. I'm an Adam Sandler fan, so I'm, I'm just going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Almost anything he makes is good, except for Hubie Halloween. That was horrible. And they made two. I don't know how they made two, but they did. Um, but if it's a serious Sandman movie, I'll watch it. Because Hustle was great, and Uncut Gems was great. So, you can't miss a third time in a row, right? I hope not. But the giant spider really... I hate that type of villain. Just spider. I don't. I don't understand why. Why does it have to be spider? It seemed like shock value or something like that that they wanted to go, or just keep you on your toes, unnerved by just using one of the most common things that people are afraid of. That's true. They beat the Mets in that. I think it was like four one or four. It was a sweep, maybe. Yep. Um, For, well, we uh, the only the only game they won was uh, game two. Syndergaard. It's a great game, and we crushed them. The the other uh, four games. Yeah. I remember, but it just, it wasn't the same to me, that, that 15, and I, spe- I know as, as a Royals fan, you're like, no, the Royals, the 15 Royals were my favorite, but that 14 Royals team, just the, the battle they went through, the fact they took those Giants to seven games, I mean, just, yeah, it's yeah. hard well, to the Giants that. were the team of destiny. Mm-hmm. You couldn't beat the Giants in an even year when they had Bumgarner and Posey. I like the 14 year better because 15 15- you're expected to win the World Series that yeah. year. We gave away our entire farm system to bring in Zobris and Cueto. Mm-hmm. We signed Kendris Morales. We brought in a little more pitching. If we didn't win the World Series that year, then you just mortgage your future for nothing. Yeah. So that year was just stress all year. You have one good year, and then it's over. Speaking of the Royals, so, yeah. that 2014 Royals team might be my favorite base, my favorite non-Red Sox team of all time. I remember I would have... I would. I never wear other jerseys. It's not my style. I know guys, people who wear them. They, you know, they're a fan of the Patriots, but they'll wear a Dallas Cowboys jersey or or whatever, yeah. just because of the style. That I just, for some reason, it's something about loyalty to me where I'm like, I just can't do that. But that Royals team was probably the closest I ever I would have been to buying like a Mike Mustakas jersey. And I'm not oh, even loose. not even kidding. Like the that was, loose. and I know they won the the World Series in '15. They beat the Mets in that. I think mm-hmm. it was like four one or four. It was a sweep, maybe. Yep. Um, For, well, we uh, the only the only game they won was uh, game two. Syndergaard. It's a great game, and we crushed them. The, the other uh, four games. Yeah, I remember, but it just it wasn't the same to me that that '15. And I, spe- I know as as a Royals fan, you're like, no, the Royals, the '15 Royals were my favorite, but. That 14 Royals team, just the the battle they went through, the fact they took those Giants to seven games, I mean, just, yeah, it's yeah. hard well, to Well, the hate Giants that. were the team of destiny. Mm-hmm. You couldn't beat the Giants in an even year when they had Bumgarner and Posey. I like the 14 year better because 15, you're expected to win the World Series that yeah. year. We gave away our entire farm system to bring in Zobris and Cueto. Mm-hmm. We signed Kendris Morales. We brought in a little more pitching. If we didn't win the World Series that year, then you just mortgage your future for nothing. Yeah. So that year was just stress all year. It's World Series or bust. 14, I was happy that we made a wild card appearance. <laughs> that wild card game where we beat the Athletics went to 12 innings. Yes. I believe. I remember that. Salvador Perez hit the walk off single. That was the greatest moment of my life. And I, other than the birth of my children, I hope they didn't hear that. <laughs> Outside of the birth of my child, the 2014 world, uh, wild card game. Yeah, I'm just looking at um, this Kansas City team right now. Uh, they were one and six against the Red Sox. So, quick oh, little flex on, on them there. Um, but uh, I'm trying to just look at. There's not a lot, I guess, of of stuff they're showing here. Okay, so Sa- obviously Salvador Perez, Alex Gordon, my God, I just I don't know why he he was just one of the guys I'll always remember. They had a lot of injuries, key injuries. Um, 
that had accumulated and guys that had been hurt over the last couple of weeks and then guys who got hurt during the game yesterday. Yeah. They were very undermanned. They knew that. There's no excuse for Travis Kelsey being left alone wide open in the mm-hmm. end zone. That was a, a failure. And I think McDermott has to look at himself more so um, for the defense because I think the defense was still more at fault. The Chiefs had 7.7 yards per play yesterday. They just ran like 30-something fewer plays. Yeah. They were dominating. And the game plan of Joe Brady and the Bills was protect the ball as much as you could. Buffalo didn't turn it over. I mean, they had the fake punt, so they turned it over on downs. But there were no fumbles or interceptions. Um, so they didn't do anything stupid in that regard. They ran the ball really, really well. And they, they kept running it. Yeah. But when Kansas City started to adjust, which inevitably good teams are going to do that, um, I just I think it, it's just got to be tough for the Bills on so many levels. But for one thing, if I had told you that Josh Allen would not be sacked and the Bills would not turn the ball over the entire game against Mahomes and the Chiefs, you just said, boy, I, I'll take my chances. Yeah. Any hole. <laughs> Literally anything. No. Just fill one, please. <laughs> yeah. Um, heartbreaking loss of the year for us, obviously for me. It was Texans Colts week eighteen. I I did. I said I was going Homer. Um, just yeah. I've said it. I've said it a million times. But I did not understand what Shane Steichen was doing at the end of that game with not not with that play with um, Trey Sermon. Not even that. I'm talking about you had the ball with six minutes. Like you want to give yourself as many opportunities to win the football game. If you're putting all your eggs in one basket on running the clock down to six minutes and saying we're losing, but we're gonna we're definitely gonna score a touchdown here. Like, go down, score as quickly as you possibly can because the hurry up almost always works in the NFL for some reason. <laughs> and yeah. then give yourself as many opportunities. Like even if you kick a field goal, you're down two, two, three, three. You're down three. Yeah. Like it just it made no sense. And then the. The I was like, well, why is Trey Sermon out on the field? And people were like, oh, well, they didn't want – they said, oh, well, Trey Sermon was running with the offense for that play. I was like, if that's the play you're going to use on fourth and one, why are you running with Trey Sermon? You're third string back. Why are you not running it with JT? And then they say, oh, well, we didn't want JT yeah. to be keyed in on. Do, do the Dolphins take Tyreek out? Bonnie Manziel uh, lost about 40 pounds just doing a strict diet of cocaine. So, Leighton. New weight loss trick. I need it. You're, I, I understand you were on a diet for a while. You I said no am. more, you said no more Coke. No more Coca-Cola. Maybe that's that? the, I'm pretty sure oh, you said you're cutting down on your sugar that. intake. Your Coke no, intake. I'm cutting my calorie and liquid calories get me so much. But now I'm actually intermittent fasting now. <laughs> Why aren't you adding cocaine to your intermittent fasting routine? Well, I didn't. I didn't know it was so helpful, but now I'm informed. So the the cocaine, I don't know how you're gonna get it, but Mm -hmm. I think that's a necessary thing. We we gotta get any any cocaine. Any people who have cocaine. The the most hilarious one to me Uh, is comeback player of the year, because obviously the winner did not even. He didn't even. He wasn't even on our minds when we put this thing together. <laughs> no. I had Tua. Michael had Lamar, actually, mm. um, and you had Foster mm. Moreau. Yeah. Uh, he was another one of the people that you know he's playing when he shouldn't have been. He's he's coming back from cancer. It's a story. It's a, it's story a great story. Up. No, yeah. it's it was a great story. Um, most explosive. And unlike Demar, no, go ahead. He played. Oh, unlike Demar, he actually played. If if Demar now I know they don't do the votes like during the playoffs, but if Demar gets the fake punt, like if if he if he gets the first down on the fake punt, I feel like they might like Roger Goodell might come in and be like, no, we, no, no, he I rule all. It's it's Demar Hamlin, <laughs> comeback player. The that guy needs dental work. Why is he the face of Punxsutawney, the great city of Punxsutawney? Needs to stand up. They need to rise up against our corrupt politicians and and Punxsutawney Phil. Our tax money is going to Punxsutawney Phil's braces. Can you can you imagine? You work a hard day's work, right? And Uncle Sam, um, Uncle Punx, um, Uncle Phil, Uncle Punxsutawney Phil comes in and says, "Hey, you worked. Let's let's say you worked eight hours today. You made you made a hundred dollars. 
that, I mean, that's a crazy low rate. If, if you're getting paid that low, just quit your job. You make a hundred dollars a day if you're working eight hours. But he's like, listen, I want $30 of that right now. That's going to my luxury. That's going to my luxury stump. It's going mm. to my braces. It's going to all the food <laughs> that I eat. And I don't even actually take wrist. care of my <laughs> And then it's going to go to my medical bills when, when my obesity causes health issues for me. Okay. Punxsutawney Phil needs to be removed from office. This is disgusting. This is gross. Mm. I say we impeach Punxsutawney Phil right now. Thing. Uh, we need what, who, what animal, I mean, what power rank the animals that could be good to replace them. I think, I think those things, quokkas, you ever seen those? They, they're like mm -hmm. the happiest animal on earth. They look like mini kangaroos. They're awesome. So you get a bald eagle to come out of the stump. And if no, it sees eagle, its shadow, if it sees its shadow. It's, it's, it's not gimmicky. <laughs> bald eagle isn't gimmicky. Yeah, but it's America. I feel like we're disrespecting the ball of the eagle if we make him the new pumps honey fill. All right. I'm, I'm nice. also, I'm pretty sure a groundhog only lives like six years. So I, I wonder if it's a new one every single year or if they. In the wild, groundhogs can live up to six years. What about in luxury yeah, stumps? They're reportedly, they're reported to live up to 14 years. Oh, in, so, the, in their penthouse, they can live up to 14 years. Yeah, Punk, Punxsutawney <laughs> Phil is now draining America's social security funds as well mm -hmm. with how long he lives. Yeah, that's, you know, they sh he should get his social security at five years old, but then he's, you know, running it up another nine years. <laughs> he's on. He's yeah, social on security it. is only supposed to last you another year to two years. <laughs> you know, at, at worst. I mean, that's at worst. If he's running this thing all the way up to 14. You're telling me he's retiring at 5 and then living on Social Security to 14. These these young groundhogs are not even going to be – they're working for Social Security. They're paying for Punxsutawney Phil's Social Security, mm -hmm. but they're not going to be able to reap the benefits of that mm -hmm. Social Security. This is ridiculous. We need to get Punxsutawney Phil out of there. Send him mm -hmm. into the wild and just let him – let's see if he's a – let's see if he can really compete in this era. He hasn't <laughs> even been in the wild. He, he's playing. He's playing against against plumbers right now. <laughs> the the, the real ones out, are out in the wild. Walking through the forest in his fur coat, ice on his wrist. <laughs> he has he has another groundhog's coat on his on him right now. That's what he's doing. He has the extra. He's soft. He's a bitch. Okay, <laughs> Hong Sunny Phil. He can't do anything now. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's got soft hands. And if you, if you're, if you're, listen, if you're defending Punk's Tony Phil, you're a bootlicker. You're, you're <laughs> have fun, have fun, you know, glazing them. Any, any Punk's Tony Phil glazers out here, you're not our friends. You're not with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're fighting for the people. We're fighting for the young groundhogs that have been grinding and grinding. And they're just blocked off by this fat tub of goo. Mm -hmm. Just kind of laid in bed all day uh, mm -hmm. for the first half of the day. And just was sad. No football, but. I, I wish they still did the pro. I wish they did the Pro Bowl after the Super Bowl because that's how they used to do it, and then you could get all the guys even from the Super Bowl to play, and then we could actually play a real football game instead of some chicken shit little flag football game. Although now that the Olympics is going to have flag football in 2028, maybe it is useful to have flag footballs in the Pro Bowl now. I feel like flag football in the Olympics will be very anticlimactic. Because I feel like because they're the literally just going to get... Gonna destroy everyone? Well, maybe. But I would think that because they're all professionals, you know, they run for two yards and then their flag's pulled. Okay, you know, run it back. And I don't know. Like, they're not hitting each other. So they're just, you know, grabbing flags. See, if it was... I would say if it was tackle football, I would be very wary of, like, the rugby players because they're... I would say they're tougher than, than like American football players because they're doing the exact same thing except just without pads. So I would definitely be afraid of that. But that it, now that it's flag, like our guys, like can you can you imagine a fucking school teacher from Kenya is gonna try and cover Tyreek Hill? Like he, that's just not happening. Well, Tyreek Hill. Actually, <laughs> what do you mean? Actually, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? I don't know. You know. You, they might be faster than we expect. They're not covering Tyreek Hill. <laughs> like a speed, speed can happen anywhere. Anyone can you have. Speed, you say Bolt plays corner for Jamaica. Uh, his ass, his ass, 
he, he doesn't have agility. He can go straight. He can't. He yeah. doesn't know how to cover anyone. Yeah, he he's punt returner. He's he'll, he'll get lit up. Returner. Like somebody will accidentally hit him, and he'll break into a million pieces. Mm. All right, one more spin, and then we're done. Yeah. Usain Bolt, wide receiver. <laughs> Again, he, he would he would literally only run. Retro gold unis in 2002, and I feel like they may have brought him back since, but they had a couple games in 2002 when they wore. Yes, they were, they were um, if you look at 2002 New Orleans Saints, they had a game where we almost looked like a color rush jersey. Because I, I like their regular jerseys with gold pants and yeah. black. But they had, it was like a light gold. And it was just all through. It was just like mm -hmm. black numbers. I, I know exactly what you're talking and, but about. But then they also had, th that year, they also wore another type of throwback that year. And I'm looking at it on their on their website, if you go ahead, New Orleans says, where it was like black with like the thicker gold numbers mm -hmm. um, and yeah, yellowish the pants. It was kind of, I don't know. White, it's a, a gold and white um, stripes on the side. Or on the sleeves, right? Yeah, and on the pants. And I'll tell you that 2002 Saints sidebar, one of the weirdest teams in NFL history. They beat every great team that year and lost to all the horrible teams. Fascinating team. <laughs> I actually think I did a Draft America article on that a few years back about, I don't know if you'll ever see an, like an anomaly like that of one team that could beat every great team. They swept the Bucks, who won the Super Bowl. They lost yeah. to like the 2-14 and 14 Bengals, 3-13 and 13 Lions. So it fits that they wore all these different uniforms because they were so Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. All right, you got one more. I got one more? Yeah. Uh, oof. Um, you know what? I'm going to do it because they brought it back this year. The Seahawks. Uh, you, did I steal that from you? Man, I was I was really thinking yeah, about it. Yeah, I mean, the Kingdom Seahawks jerseys with, like, Curtis from the Curtis Podcast Network is back. Uh, if you haven't read our Chaotic Mean Tolerant end of season NFL awards, head over to Chaotic Mean Tolerant right now. Um, warning, I gave Dak Prescott my MVP. You know, yes, I, I've right. been against Dak for so long, but I'm just, I'm looking at the numbers and it's a quarterback league. I had to give it to him. Yeah. Yeah. And instead we just keep giving Lamar hardware. <laughs> exactly. Um, but I'm not sure why we're even talking about this because according to my notes, let me just, let me just throw the glasses on for a second. According to my notes here, the, those are, those are the sense. NFL is rigged because hold on just trying I'm trying to read through all these notes Joe Biden has employed Taylor Swift and Roger Goodell together to rig the NFL so more people will get the vaccine but apparently this has been going on for a long time because the NFL chose to put a quarterback who grew up in San Francisco went to Michigan to put him in New England, of all places, and then another quarterback.